Well, hello there, and welcome to the Interface Engine how-to videos. My name is Pedro Jimenez, and I will be your instructor in this series. This set of videos will cover the Next Gen Connect, formerly Mirth Connect, integration engine. So you found the perfect candidate, only to discover that critically missing skill for that surprise project? Break your way free from uncertain skills prison and get effective relief for your internal resources with a one-stop shop of everyday expertise that you can utilize as you want and when you want it with full control of your budget with engineering concierge services from the ACI Solution. Please visit theacisolution.com or email info at theacisolution.com. And now, let's get started. In this lesson, we will install a database engine. We will be using Postgres as the new database. Back up the integration engine channel configuration and switch to the new database and restore its channels. So let's address this question. Why change the database? While the stock NextGen Connect engine does include a database engine, Apache Derby, NextGen recommends that it be used for non-production purposes only. There are several reasons for this, such as overall robustness, control of database growth, and better management tools among them. Fortunately, NextGen Connect already provides several alternate database choices, which include SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, and Postgres, which is the one that I will be demonstrating today in a Microsoft Windows environment. This video demonstrates a method for breaking up and restoring the NextGen Connect integration engine configuration. User access credentials, log messages, and events are not part of the engine configuration and are not carried forward. So we part from the assumption that it is acceptable that integration engine events and log message data will be left behind. After all, the integration engine is a data transformation and routing middleware device and not a record management and storage application. In other words, data permanency is not endemic in the core use cases for an integration engine. We invite you to check out the Event Tasks and Message Browser Tasks section of the NextGen Connect User Guide for more information on how to preserve engine events and stored message data. So by now you may be asking, so what exactly gets backed up? The answer is integration engine properties and settings such as server, administrator, global variables, and data management related tasks. All channels, alerts, and scripts. So what does not get backed up? User credentials. Please make sure to make a list of them, including usernames, contact information, and always use strong passwords. Logged engine events and stored messages. If you do wish to back these up, please refer to the Backup Current Server Configuration section of the NextGen Connect user manual. But before we dive into the steps, let's ensure success and look at some information sources to guarantee a smooth database changeover. As part of your planning, we recommend that you review the Changing the Database section of the NextGen Connect user guide. This section outlines the choice of database engines that can be utilized, as well as a review of the steps required to execute the database switch. Please review carefully. But best of all, this section is not long at all. Also review the Postgres SQL page. This is where you will find the database installation requirements documentation and the installation files available for download. As in the motto, expect a great outcome, but flying for the worst, we recommend that you schedule a virtual machine or Docker container backup snapshot shortly before the database switch operation, just in case you run into trouble. Also consider backing up interface engine logged events and stored messages. Backing up stored messages may prove useful if you are currently troubleshooting an interface or if you feel that you may need to resend messages. It is not a common scenario, but it is definitely nice to have those options. For example, there is a chance that I will be asked to resend corrected demographics information going back three months. Therefore, backing up a demographics channel's messages would definitely prove useful. Fortunately, the list of NextGen Connect users is usually quite limited 
So although user access credentials are not included in any of the backup options supported by the engine, please make a list of relevant engine access information as you will need to manually re-enter it into the user's lists after you restore the engine configuration. It's time to install the new database engine on your preferred server, which can be totally separate from the integration engine machine. But given NextGen Connect's small footprint, it may be worth to install it on the same machine where the integration engine is currently running. In our case, we will be installing on the same virtual machine where our NextGen Connect engine instance currently resides on. We have selected Postgres as our database management system for the Microsoft Windows environment. As part of the setup, this is where you will enter a database administrator or super user password. Make sure it's a strong one. Here we enter a master password, enter the super user password that you set during the install, and create a database user that NextGen Connect will use to access Postgres. Next, we set the NextGen Connect user privileges and database membership role. Now it's time to create a database for use by the NextGen Connect integration engine. And assigned a Mirth user as the database owner. With the new Postgres database installed, it is time to proceed with a scheduled virtual machine or Docker container backup. You should perform this operation as close to the time of the database switch as possible. The next step is to perform a backup of all interface channels and server configuration. Remember, the server backup configuration feature does not backup users, events, or stored messages. This is the most critical step of the operation, an entire backup of the integration engine. This is accomplished through the backup config feature. In the left-hand panel, Click on Settings and on Backup Config. Include a day stamp as your file name and click Save. Your engine configuration now resides in the same file that you will use to restore your channels and settings after you switch to the new database. However, please take note that you can revert back to the old database just in case you have problems as your configuration is also present there. Now it's time to perform the database switch. Once you have coordinated integration engine downtimes, let's proceed with the first step of turning off the NextGen Connect engine. Locate the Mirth Connect Service Manager, navigate to the Service tab, and hit the Stop button. Please allow a few seconds for the engine to stop. This allows for each channel to finish processing of any messages within it. A channel will stop only when it has finished processing of all of its messages. You may risk leaving messages behind in the old database if you kill the Mirth Connect servers suddenly. If in any doubt, you can manually stop each channel and visually verify that all queues are clear. The stop button will dim and the start button will be enabled, indicating that the engine service is now stopped. Alternately, you can also open the services window to verify and control the NextGen Connect engine services operation. Locate the Mirth Connect service. Select it, right click, and select Stop. In our case, the service is already stopped. Hence, Start is the only available service control action at this time. Once you are certain that the NextGen Connect service is down, you can switch to Database. While under Mirth Connect Server Manager, click on the Database tab and select Postgres from the drop down list. Then enter the NextGen Connect database username and its corresponding password. This is the same username that was selected as the MirthDB database owner during the Postgres SQL database installation. Finally, before you restart Mirth, open the Windows Service Manager and make sure that the Postgres SQL database service is running. 
Then scroll up to the Mirth Connect service, select it, and start it. You can do the same in the Mirth Connect Server Manager service tab. Just hit start, wait a few seconds, and the start button will dim, with the restart and stop buttons enabled. If you get any reported errors while attempting to start the Mirth Connect service, this could be because the Postgres database service is not running. So please perform the following troubleshooting steps. First, check if the Postgres service is running. Scroll down to the Postgres SQL service and start it. Then, scroll up to the Mirth Connect service and start it. If you already checked the Postgres service and you're still getting errors, this could be due to a bad Mirth Connect Postgres user credential. First, check the Mirth service running status. A bad Mirth Connect engine credential will cause the Mirth Connect service to spontaneously stop. Open the NextGen Connect engine logs under the Logs folder in the Mirth Connect Program Installation folder. Scroll down to the very bottom of the log file. In our case, a Mirth Connect engine credential caused the authentication error. To correct that, I re entered the Mirth username password and retest it by restarting the engine. It's that simple. Now that the next Connect engine is running, please log in. Because this is an empty database, you will need to recreate your username as this for a newly installed engine instance. But no worries, you will be able to restore your channels in the next step. To restore your engine configuration, click on Settings in the left-hand panel and click Restore Config. Select your most recent backup file, click Open, then click Yes. The channels will deploy automatically with the same deployment settings as when you backed them up. If you are concerned about the channels deploying automatically all at once, please leave the Deploy All Channels After Import box unchecked. Congratulations! You have now safely and successfully switched to database. Please make sure that data pruning and database task settings are set to take advantage of the database growth management features offered by Postgres and other database engines. And that concludes our lesson. For more training videos, please check out the video library at www.bhcisolution.com. Here you will find the Meditech Report Designer and more videos in the Next Gen Connect Education Series. This is Pedro Jimenez, and again, thank you for watching.